everyone. Uh, my name is Ira, and this is the fourth video in a series of videos um, attempting to teach trans 101 from a less simplified and more accurate point of view. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be learning about the normative trans narrative, what that is, what the problem with it is, and such and so forth. But before we can actually get to that, we have to learn the difference between normal and normative. Also, you might be wondering, like, hey, Hyra, I've, I've learned Trans 101 before, and, and your videos are a lot different than the Trans 101 that I attended. Um, they're a little bit more complicated, and I don't understand why you're making things so complicated. It's really quite simple. Um, here's the thing. No, it's not. <laughs> and when we simplify it, we spread it misinformation. And so I'm going to get into that a little bit more. There's a reason why I'm making these videos different than, than the normative trans narrative that you've been learning about. And when we talk about what is the normative trans narrative, you'll probably be like, oh yeah, that's what I learned. And I'm going to talk about why that's messed up. <laughs> All right, so the normative trans narrative. What is normative and what is normal? All right, so normative... That looks like a U versus normal. Normal is anything that's naturally occurring. I'm normal, you're normal, your parents are normal, your pet is normal, your friends are normal, and such and so forth. Everybody and everything in this universe is normal. Don't let anybody ever, ever tell you otherwise. <coughs> Normative is when we take one aspect of someone's identity and we say that that's normal, and anything or anyone who doesn't fall into that is abnormal, right? So good examples of this. Um, the media tells us that it's normal to be white. Well, it is normal to be white, but it's also normal to be a person of color, as evidenced by the fact that people of color exist. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the media tells us that it's normal to be straight. Well, it is normal to be straight, but it's also normal to be not straight, as evidenced by the fact that non-hetero people exist. Hello again. <laughs> um, in terms of being trans, the media tells us that it's normal to be cisgender, uh, and I'll define that uh, when we go over terms in the next video. The media tells us that it's normal to be cisgender, right? And that if you're transgender, you're not normal. But then if you're transgender, then you have to be you know, just a boy or just a girl in order to be normal, that anybody who doesn't fit into that is abnormal. Well, <laughs> hello media, I'm trans and I'm not just a boy. <laughs> All right, so does that make sense? What happens when we make something normative? Uh, again, like I said, anything that doesn't, or anyone that does not fall into the normative narrative is told that they are not good enough told that they are not as valid. They're told that they are immoral in some cases. They're told that they are abnormal, that they are a fluke, that the product of their existence is of a mental illness, that the mental illness is abnormal in and of itself, hello ableism, um, and such and so forth. By creating normative things, we also create the existence of oppression. So what comes out of something being normative? Well, heterosexism, cissexism, ableism, ageism, sizeism, and such and so forth. Right, so the normative trans narrative. Let's see, what you'll normally learn <laughs> in a trans narrative is, hey, everyone, there's this girl, or this boy, and this girl wants to be a boy, so she gets what's called, the, what's called a sex change. Or this boy gets a sex change so that he can become a girl. You learn that, you learn a bunch of myths. The first one being that we all always feel this way. 100% of trans people are the same. You learn that we hate our bodies. You learn that we are all binary identified. Um, you learn that we are, I don't even know if you can see this anymore, all straight. And such and so forth. 
what's the problem with this? You're like, yeah, okay, so I'm transgender, and this is my story. Are you saying that there's something wrong with me? No. Absolutely not. Not saying there's something wrong with anybody at all. What I'm saying is that at the point in time where you're saying 100% of trans people are something, you better be telling the truth. 100% of trans people are different. 100% of trans people have different experiences. There is no one trans experience, and we teach people that there is. So at the point in time where we're saying 100% of trans people do one thing, and then there's one trans person who doesn't do that, even if 99% of us did something the exact same way, if 1% didn't, we're still teaching things inaccurately, and we shouldn't be teaching things that way. So we learn that all trans people want hormones. That, oh wow, that is a terrible ass. Um, that we all get surgeries. I'm just really bad at writing essays today. <laughs> that, that we're all stealth. Et cetera, et cetera. So, a problem with this is that it leads to cisgender people being terrible, terrible allies. <laughs> <coughs> because it purports that there's FTM and there's MTS. There's no one between or beyond these things. Does this look familiar, everyone? <laughs> there's no one between or beyond these things. And that trans people are always in the process of becoming their genders until they get whatever surgery, right? Or until they reach whatever medical goal. <coughs> no. <laughs> no. The problem with this is that nothing makes someone a certain gender other than identifying that way. Your gender is not what you look like. Your gender is not based on what surgeries you have or have not gotten. Your gender is not based on your body. Your gender is not based on anything other than saying, hey, everyone, I'm a man. Hey, everyone, I'm a woman. Hey, everyone, I'm genderqueer, right? And so we'll learn a, bit of, a little more about that when we talk about the process of self-identification and how everyone self-identifies, not just trans people. Um, so yeah, does that make sense? That's the normative trans narrative. When I, I don't know if you remember the first video, how I was just like, I'm making these videos because I'm not a boy stuck in a girl's body. Um, if the normative trans narrative purports that there is such a thing as a girl body, um, when there isn't, other than bodies that belong to girls. <laughs> um, the normative trans narrative erases everyone who does not fit into that model. We're not really learning about trans people. We're learning about one type of trans person when we learn the normative trans narrative. Um, and so hopefully, through these videos, we'll learn about a bunch of different types of trans people, potentially all trans people, because I'm not going to say that all trans people are the same. We're just learning about what it is to be trans, what it is not to be trans, and such and so forth. Um, if you have any questions, as always, you can email me. My email is Ira D. Gray at gmail dot com. Um, you can ask me an anonymous question on my blog if you are shy. So it's Ira Dalton Gray dot com forward slash ask if you would like to ask me a question, or, you know, you don't have to have this part if you just want to read it. <laughs> um, if you are my friend on Facebook, or if you have seen my Facebook, you can send me a message, and you can write on my wall. I always answer every question. Always. Um, and there's no such thing as a stupid question. If you sincerely do not understand something, I am more than willing to explain. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope you understand the need for a different way of teaching about trans people. Um, I don't want to assume that people are incapable of understanding my existence. So I don't want to oversimplify things to the point where it's inaccurate. Um, so yeah, I, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, ask, and I will see you all soon. Bye.